champion Gary Carrington of Plasto, New Hampshire, faces the challenge of Jerry Belmosto of Randolph, Massachusetts on Candlefin Bowling. Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to Candlefin Bowling. I'm Don Gillis, and as always, I speak for all of us here when I say we're glad you could join us here at the Fairway in Natick, Massachusetts for three strings of Candlefin Bowling, total pinfall determining our winner. Each takes home a permanent souvenir provided by the Ace Trophy Company of Boston. Each takes home some prize money. We have guaranteed prize money of $1,200. $700 of that goes to the winner, $350 to the runner-up, $50 available to the winner of each string, and obviously if they tied, they would split that at $25 a piece, and that did happen last week in the middle string. You know about all the others. If not, I'll remind you as it goes along. I mean the other ways of making uh, bonus money. But right now, let's talk to today's bowler, shall we? Jerry, since this is the very first time, huh? Yes, it is. But it's not the first time you started bowling. It's not the first time you've been on television. That's huh? correct. You were where, on Channel 7? Yeah, back the uh, about 14 years ago. How about that? When, uh, and uh, the, oh, that was the show that starred Ralph Stewart and Dana Hershey. Oh, I guess it. it was the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, so uh, did, did you bowl for, did you stop for a while? Or yeah, I, I lost the uh, second time I was on, I lost by two pins, so I gave it up for about 12 years. Just like that, you just, gave it up? You lost once like and you gave it up? Lost twice. <laughs> I mean, you lost twice and you gave it up, huh? Right. Well, uh, how long have you been bowling now? About uh, four years. And I, you told me to, that even though you live in Randolph, that, right. that all your buddies are in Brockton, that's where you right. used to live, will, that's it. That you haven't forgotten them, yeah, huh? That's right. Okay. And Gary, Gary Carrington, uh, you've been rolling along, uh, even though, I mean, most people would would kill to have a, a, a 384, but you have a 448 and a 451, and you want to throw back one of those because it isn't as good as your average. Right? Uh, that, that 384, it felt like a struggle. It's a good score. Uh, you can't complain. It was a winning score. That's that's what I'm here to win. You know? and, uh, and as usual, I keep writing down bonus money, bonus money, bonus money. You kind of like that, huh? <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Good luck to you and to you, Jerry, your first time. And we're to today's challenger, Jerry Balmosto making his first appearance on the program. Phew, what a way to start! Jerry has a league average of 118. High single 198, high triple 467. Great number. He picks up seven with the first ball and leaves the one, three, and six. Fired that ball and missed it to the left. It actually, he had so much spin on it that it actually broke that way. So, it was a seventh bill and an eight box. Now Gary Carrington. Gary with a league average of, a sizzling league average of 134. And Gary has a spare leave. The five and the eight. A piece of wood to the right. It rolled away. Now rolling back. He's giving it some encouragement to go over against the five. He made it. So Gary begins with a spare. a strike on the spare. Now our challenger, Jerry Belmosto of Randolph, originally from Brockton. And as you can see, he has unique bowling balls. I referred to them kidding earlier. You're firing silver bullets. as he had the one, three, seven, and ten standard. It's an eye. And it's a slow motion strike. 
Gary Carrington with two marks in a row. Three in a row, as you know, establishes a bonus of $50. Let's see if he can get it. It's a strike. Here's the first bonus ball. That gets him five, leaves him a diamond right plus the 10 pin. Three, five, six, nine, and 10. No wood to help. No, he did not get it. The total fill is eight. Now looking at three and five, and he gets the three, leaves the five, it's a nine. Gary leaves a seven alone over on the left, six and ten over on the right. Okay. It's a ten. So with two bonus balls still to be thrown by our challenger, the score working on filling a strike is our challenger, Jerry Belmosto. Ralph Stewart calls time. The first ball knocks down eight and leaves the seven and 10 with one piece of wood which is coming out and has to be removed because it is well this side of the Deadwood line. He has two more, one up against the 10. There are the silver bowling balls, most unusual. I, we'd have to say unique. I know of no one else who has them. He got the 10, sent some wood over, but the seven is still there. That's a nine, as the, the ball he threw touched a couple of pieces of wood that were in the gutter before it picked off the seven. Let that one go much too soon. He winds up with an eight. The silver bowling balls belonging to our challenger, and Gary Carrington has uh, very different ones also. They are black and white. Uh, I remarked about them, and he said, yeah, those are my skunk balls. I haven't seen anybody skunk them yet, though. All right, he says the seven and the eight. help of a piece of wood that was to the right side of the seven pin. And a strike on top of that. Gary Carrington keeping our scorekeeper is busy. Al Gilio, as usual, is on the electronic scoreboard. And as we mentioned last week, at great expense, we have brought back Isaac Laffinghouse to fill in for Keith Williams. Jerry looking at four horsemen, right side, plus the seven pin. No wood to help. Let's see if he can do it. He did it. Hey, that's a pretty shot. That is a pretty spear. Four horsemen, one side, the opposite corner. No wood. Very pretty. He gets six on the first ball. Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee, as you can see, sitting right on the lob line. He's got those black and white spectator shoes, one on each side. And, ooh, he just missed. He left the number one. Don Riley is our statistician and coordinator. 
Phil Rubin, of course, is our producer and director. And Jerry makes it a 10. Now let's see whether we can get any bonus money coming up. He's had uh, two in a row in the first and second box, then the ninth, the uh, a nine in the third, a 10 in the fourth. Now two marks. Let's see if he can put three together. Gary Carrington I'm talking about to see if he can get some bonus money here. <coughs> Almost did it with one swipe. He left just the seven pin. Yes. $50 in bonus money. Three marks in a row. And of course, it's alive now. So that every mark in this string, if it's consecutive after those three, is worth $50 apiece. He wanted the three pin to go down, but it wouldn't. So he has four and seven alone on the left. And the three pin. A ten. Our crew today is Chris O'Hare, John Rosenfeld, Jeff Sullivan, Joe Sukar, and in post-production videotape, Doug DeVitt. Now our challenger. Gary Belmosto. He leaves six and ten. He's representing the Maple Alleys in Brockton at a 661 in winning his roll off. With a 118 average, a high single of 198, and a high triple of 467. Ooh, he didn't get the two of them, he got just the six pin. It's a nine. One oh five needs a mark in order to hit his average. He released that ball too soon. He's looking at six of them. One, two, four, eight, and six and ten, and he got everything except the ten. Boy, there would have been a roar if that had gone with no wood to help. It's an eye. 114. Takes care of two and four. And the six for a ten. 131. One thirty-four. Excuse me, one thirty-four. Uh, now wood. He has seven and ten. There are five pieces of wood in between, and he is studying this very carefully. Now fires, and yes, he made it. One thirty-four and. Uh, Al, from now on, I'll let you do the arithmetic. You'd think after all these years, I'd learn not to take those quick, wild guesses. One, two, three, four, five, six, four is the fill. One, forty, eight. And the score after one is our defending champion, Gary Carrington, 148. String, our defending champion, Gary Carrington, leads it off. 
He didn't like that one because he knew he was going to hit the, uh, excuse me, miss the head pin. Pretty shot taking out one, three, six, and seven. Our challenger, Jerry Belmosto. Four horsemen right side and the eight pin. Tough shot, but he does have a piece of wood to the left of the three pin. Still didn't go. He took out the four horsemen beautifully. It's a nine. All but one, the six pin. Makes it. Spare in the second. Gary Carrington with two marks in a row to lead off this middle string. Let's see if he can pick up some more bonus money. Already has a hundred. Yes, sir. A strike, and it's two strikes in a row. That always stirs up everybody because of the extra bonus of $1,000 for three strikes in a row. Here he goes. Oh, to full on the head pin. Seven is the fill, and he's still left with one, three, excuse me, three, six, and nine. As he punched out the middle, got almost a spread eagle with the first ball, got three of them. All right, let's see now whether our challenger can get a good fill on top of his spare seven rocking, but not going down, and he's left with three, six, and seven. Wood to the left, though, of the three. Can he do it? He did it. Used the sidewall, banged it off the right sidewall, and made it bounce across. He gets nine and leaves the nine. He's got some wood that right now is acting as a roadblock. Got three pieces of wood, and he can't get at the nine the way they are right now. He's making up his mind as to what he's going to do. Well, actually, he's vacillating a little and trying to decide. Now he's decided what he's going to do, and nope, it definitely was a roadblock. He could not get at it. He made a 10. After four boxes of this middle string, Gary Carrington is leading 69 to 50. Middle string, halfway point of the match. One, two, four, and 10. Piece of wood to the left of the four. Another one behind the one and two. Made it. 
So three marks, then uh, a nine, and now another mark. Eight, and a spare lead, five and nine with wood in between. Now another piece of wood comes rolling perpendicular to Gary, and uh, it's going to be somewhere just to the right of that five pin. He made it, so he has two more. Basically five marks in the first six boxes of the middle string. Now our challenger, Jerry Belmosto, making his first appearance. Six and nine with wood in between, seven over on the left, and a couple of pieces of wood to the right of it. Nope. Obviously got the six and nine, but did not get the seven. It's a nine. Big first ball left only the six pin. And there's wood in front of it at a good angle. He's got it. Bear in the six. Gary Carrington once again with an opportunity for bonus money. Two marks in a row. Let's see if he can get some more. Yes, sir. So actually, with the exception of the fourth box when he had a nine, he has nothing but marks here in the middle string. Two full on the head pin. He got a spread eagle plus one. The 10 pin fell. Two, four, seven on the left, three and six on the right. Two full on the two. So that bonus streak stops after three. And again, it's a nine, which stops it. But he has a fine string working. Now our challenger, he's working on a spare. Jerry Belmosto, he gets six. Object pin becomes the two. He has two, seven, nine, ten. Three pieces of wood. And he got everything except the seven. Obviously waiting for wood. There it is. Three pieces, one of them moving back and forth, going for that. Now the wood was in his way, and he could not get at the seven. One, two, seven, nine, and ten. Nine and ten still there. It's a nine. Now Gary Carrington already at one thirty two through eight at a 148 opening string and a strike 142 three weeks ago he rolled a 451 uh, excuse me 
448. Two weeks ago, a 451. Last week, a 384. Eight with the first. Four and seven to pick up. Yes, he has it. One sixty two plus. One seventy one. What a string for Gary Carrington. One seventy one. Our challenger, Jerry Belmosto, looking at four and seven to pick up Forrest Bear with wood in front of it in a favorable position, and he does not waste that one. No way. He got a spare of the ninth, puts him at 108. Adds eight as a fill, and he's looking at the six and nine to convert for another mark. Ooh, too bad, he missed the six pin. Don't like to give up spare leaves. They don't come that often. A 126. And uh, the score right now at the end of two. Is two strings to be four pins over your average and to be 79 pins behind. Good try, missed uh, only getting the seven pin. It's a nine as the ball bounced off a piece of wood in the gutter. Jerry is single, employed in retail management. Gary Carrington, of course, is married and the father of two sons, eight-year-old Matt, two-year-old Mickey. He's employed as a pipe fitter. Great shot by Jerry, but he wasn't able to pick up the four pin. Got the three, six, ten, and seven. And he leaves it again. Gary Carrington needing just 81 in order to get another 400. He leads toward our championship show with a 451. He's in top seed. He has a spare leave. Three, six, and ten. Surprisingly, he missed the three, took out the six and ten. And he has that one for a ten. left side plus the five and eight one piece of wood just to the right two and four still there it's an eight box and kind of a surprise he's got a sheepish grin on his face as he comes back and looks at some of the guys who have come here to the Rudman. Our challenger, Jerry Belmosto of Randolph, looking at one, two, nine, ten. 
And the head fin's still there. Now he's got it. Everything down except the four pin. Yes, it is a spare. Gary Carrington, as you know, just missed a spare in the first as he had three, six, and ten, and he took out six and ten, left the three. Then he had an eight box. He's got the three, four, and six with lovely wood just to the left of that three pin, and he made it. Uh, when you live right, you get the proper piece of wood. Six is the fill, and he's right now looking at the three, five, six, and seven. Nope. Six and seven still there. It's an eye. Now coming up to work on the spear that he had in the fourth is our challenger, Jerry Belmosto. Seven is his fill. Yes, he has two in a row. Seven, that's what he has knocked down for the fill, and he's looking right now at the four, seven, and eight. Ralph Stewart has called time. He wants to check on a piece of wood that now it's going to roll behind the Deadwood line, and it's rolling over toward... In fact, it uh, banged into the four pin and rocked it a little bit. Oh! Too bad he did not get three in a row for bonus money. It's a 10. In case uh, anybody's wondering about Gary Carrington's 171 and where it, where it stands uh, as far as our high singles are concerned, uh, we have listed, that is, our statistician Don Riley has listed for me the top 12, and uh, that 171 is, is not one of those. We have 12 that are 181 or better. Nine. Right now for Gary Carrington. Ed Zernicke, of course, has the top one with a 197. Dick O'Connell has a 194. Jim Barber and Dan Lasko each have 191s, and Pete Iannuzzo a 190. Those are the top five. Wayne Basilinski has a 189. Jim Kelly a 186. Tom Olsta also has a 186. Tom Sonomy a 182. Don Richmond a 182. Fred Spintig a 182. Tom Olsta and Don Richmond each has a 181.
Gary Belmosto. Looking at the three, six, and ten to convert for a spare. Oh, got the three and six, but the ten didn't go. Now a piece of wood rolls up against it, but gently. And now it's decided to roll away. Next week's challenger is Glenn Comey. He has been on our program twice before, but uh, a little over 10 years ago. In fact, Wayne Alden, who was on last week and uh, lost to Gary Carrington, was defeated by Glenn Comey back on the 22nd of uh, November in 1980. I am holding off for a second because, yes, another one just tumbled. He did have four horsemen left side, but the, the two pin has just toppled. So now he has the one, two pieces of wood, then the four and seven, but the wood was not in a favorable position. Instead of being on a parallel plane to uh, the pit, it was on an angle. So it's uh, another nine. 91. Now Gary Carrington. He's at 60 so far. After six, he needs 81 in order to have another 400 and an extra bonus of $100. The five and the seven. Got the five, left the seven. Excuse me, it was five and eight. He left the uh, eight pin. And he gets a split here. Eight marks in the middle string, one so far here in the third string. It's a nine. He needs two pins in order to uh, get another 400. Leading by 67. Now, Jerry Belmosto from Randolph. The one and two have just toppled. Two into the, the one, and he has the seven pin with wood in front of it to pick up. Spare in the ninth. Now at 101. In the ninth, plus what he gets here. Give him seven more. Four, seven, and nine. Seven pins still there. His average is 118. Oh, too bad. He went for that, but he also had a piece of wood in the gutter, so it's a 117. The total is still better than his average. Now, Gary Carrington. He has a strike. He only needed two for a 400. Four oh eight plus seven more. And he's looking at the one, the two, and the seven. Four twenty-four. Four twenty-five. Make that.
So another $100 in bonus money, and uh, our challenger, Jerry Belmasto, has won the third string and picks up $50 in bonus money. $200 in our home viewers, 82. As you well know, we will give 10 either side of that, so if I draw a card and that person is anywhere from 772 to 792, then he or she will win. Okay, uh, let's see. This card is from uh, Quincy, Massachusetts, Bicknell Street. It's Lillian G. Thomas, and her guess is 763. So it will be $250 next week. Now, uh, in our uh, high low jackpot, let's see, that's up to about 300. What is it? Uh, $325 now. Gary, you want to take a try at it? Jerry? Okay, Jerry, if you stay here and uh, right over here where the folks can get a good look at you. All right, now, tell me honestly, was this, uh, was it uh, better or worse than you? I don't mean the score because you rolled better than your average and not a lot of that lousy. Uh, was it uh, was it better or worse than you thought it was going to be? Uh, much better. Yeah, much better. Gary makes it easy. You know, it's easy to lose if someone bowls 425. <laughs> uh, yeah, he can really deliver it. And you're you're another fastballer too. You know, uh, one time we put uh, a, a radar gun and uh, Ed Harding had a radar gun at one of our. And I was surprised, but some, you know, you look like you're firing at about 90 miles an hour, and sometimes he does. And surprisingly, we found that nobody was going over 50 miles an hour. But of course, we have to re realize that there's a lot of friction on the deck here. It's not the same as firing a baseball. Yeah. Let's see what we have for you on your first appearance. $350 just for showing up and being a... Can't beat that. And $50 in bonus money, plus a permanent souvenir, which comes from... Uh, uh, the Ace Trophy Company, right. and uh, don't uh, stay away too long. Right? Thank okay, you. Gary, we're rolling along. Let's see. Do you, I don't know if you realize, but just for the heck of it, I added up your 451, your 448, your 425, and your 384. It comes to 1708 pins divided by four shows means you're averaging 427. <laughs> if I can keep averaging that, uh, I like that. Uh, I don't blame you, and. Uh, also, you keep averaging a lot of bonus money. Today, $350 in bonus money, plus 700 And a guy who hasn't been here for almost 10 years is going to be your challenger next week, Glenn Comey. He comes from out in the middle of the state there in Templeton. Yeah, I know Glenn very well. Okay, good. Good luck to you. And uh, you'll be here, I know. And I'll be here. We'll see Glenn and you, too, next week. Bye-bye, everybody.